Hi, let's have a little talk about what synthesizers are and how they work. We're gonna start from zero. Pretend you've never seen a synthesizer before. Pretend you've never heard a note on a musical instrument before. In keeping with the theme of zero, I'm using a zero coast and a zero control to demonstrate these concepts. But this will apply broadly to any patchable synthesizer and probably plenty of hardwired synths as well. On the Zero Coast, we have a little bit more direct access to the circuits than you might find on a hardwired synth, but the concepts are generally the same. What we're talking about here is specifically analog synthesis of the style originated by Don Buchla, Bob Moog, and others. Most synthesizers, analog and digital, modular and hardwired, will utilize these concepts to some degree. So, how does a synthesizer make sound? First, we should probably talk about what sound actually is and how it's made in general in the world. Sound is the compression and expansion of air particles in the world around us and sensed by our ear. For example, when we speak, our vocal cords vibrate. They cause ripples in the air and when those waves of compression and expansion of air molecules make it to our ear, our ear hears it as sound. A synthesizer does not in itself have the power to move the air like that. Instead, it creates electrical signals. When the voltage inside the circuit goes up, the electrons all move in one direction. When the voltage goes down, they all move in the other direction. What we hear from the synthesizer is the amplification of this electrical signal moving up and down or back and forth as the electrons move from one direction to the other. It's translated into a speaker cone moving out and then back in. The basic place in which this happens is the oscillator. And in the zero coast, there are two basic waveforms that we can start from in the oscillator circuit. There's the triangle and the square. We're gonna start with what we call the default drone patch from the Zero Coast manual. This is to take a voltage offset from the voltage math here and patch it to the dynamic CV input. This is gonna let us hear the triangle coming through. The triangle is wired to the input of the balance circuit and I'm going to go ahead and turn that down so that we only hear the pure triangle. The triangle is kind of a round, soft sound. It goes up smoothly and it comes back down smoothly. We also have a square wave available. The square wave, it's a little more harsh. It goes from all the way down to all the way up instantly and then back instantly on the other side, making a right angled square and we can hear when we patch it in that it's also a little less smooth sounding than the triangle. It's buzzier. In this video, the main thing I wanna talk about controlling is the pitch of the oscillator. And pitch corresponds to the frequency of the oscillation. When we talk about pitch, we tend to talk in spatial metaphors. Uh, for example, low pitch and high pitch, uh, these things aren't actually coming from lower and higher places, but they're something that we associate with that spatial metaphor anyway. We also tend to associate them with bigger and smaller things. For example, when you make a lower pitched sound, you sort of feel like you're expanding your, your voice box and kind of flattening it out and getting bigger. Whereas when you make a little high pitch sound, you tend to, we tend to perk up and become smaller in some kind of way. There's not a total correlation between big things and low pitches or small things and high pitches, but it's kind of a shorthand that we have in order to uh, understand something that doesn't actually exist in space in that particular way. But the metaphor actually does make sense in a certain way when we talk about the frequency of oscillators because lower pitches or lower frequencies, the wave is going to take longer to go up and down and therefore 
one's whole cycle of the waveform is going to actually be bigger in terms of the amount of air molecules that it takes up. As there are fewer and fewer oscillations per second, the speed that it travels through the air is the same, so we have fewer waves of air taking up the same space, and therefore each wave is bigger. As we speed it up, the pitch gets higher, and the waves get smaller. Now on the synthesizer, this pitch is controlled by voltage, which is the same thing that is actually used to create the sound. As we recall, the electrons move one direction and then the other, and we consider that going up and down in voltage, and that's what's, what makes the wave that we hear. At the same time, we have another voltage that's going to set how fast that happens. And the main way that we control that, or the simplest way to control it, is with the pitch knob, which creates a voltage that is injected into the oscillator and tells it how, what frequency it should be oscillating at. This is why we call it a voltage controlled oscillator, because as you increase the voltage, you also increase the pitch, therefore using voltage to control it. Now, of course, the beauty of the synthesizer is you can not only turn a knob to change the pitch, we also have a jack, the one volt per octave jack, which allows us to patch another voltage from somewhere else and use that to control it. For example, we have the pitch row pitch channel of the zero control, which we can patch into that volt per octave input. This gives us eight voltages that are stored by the knobs of the channel. And we can switch from one to the next of these instantaneously. by touching the touch plates of the zero control. And of course, we can control exactly what they hold by just turning the knobs. It could be fun to create melodies by actually turning the knob, but we're never gonna get the kind of instantaneous change that we get by switching from one step to the next on the zero control. And it also has the clock button with which we can just sequence through all eight steps one after the other automatically. Another option for controlling pitch is the slope circuit. This circuit is actually kind of like an oscillator. It goes up and down just like the triangle wave does, except that we have independent control over the rise and the fall and how long they're gonna take relative to each other. If we patch slope to one volt per octave, you'll hear what I mean. We have rise. How long it takes to go up. And fall, how long it takes to go down. Now the only real difference between this and the triangle wave we hear is that this one's too slow to really be heard. If we patch it, straight into that balance input and replace the triangle wave with the slope wave, we don't hear it initially. But if we go fast enough, turn up those rise and fall to go fast enough, it can start to sound a lot like the triangle wave. Not exactly like it, because the shape's gonna be a little different based on the controls. But 
really pretty similar. Similarly, the end of cycle gate output is a lot like the square wave. Not exactly like it, but similar. And just like the oscillator that we're used to hearing already, we can use the time CV input on the slope circuit to control its pitch with the zero control. the balance control we can hear the oscillator along with it and we can use overtone and multiply controls to change the timbre of it and we can control both of these circuits pitches at the same time So we've heard that although the oscillator is the main way that we create sound with the zero coast, we can also listen to the slope because the slope, while being designed for controlling the pitch of the oscillator or some other parameter on the zero control, it's the same stuff as the oscillator. Stuff, meaning the moving of electrons back and forth. And if we amplify it, when it's going fast enough, we can hear it just like we can with the oscillator. In fact, we could even hear the zero control itself. We can clock the zero control with, for example, the square wave of the zero coast, which of course is going fast enough to hear. And if we go ahead and listen to it and put that zero control pitch output into the balance input so we can hear it. We have a waveform that we can control using these knobs. And we control its pitch. using the pitch of the square wave. In fact, we can even patch one of the gate outputs from the zero control steps into the reset here and change how many steps of the zero control or clock to create this waveform. If we turn up balance so we hear the oscillator, we can hear that it's always in tune with the zero control, so to speak. We could take a second channel of the zero control and use it to control something timbral on the zero coast.
And we're not using the slope circuit right now, so why not patch it to control the pitch of the oscillator? That's pretty extreme. Let's patch it to the linear FM input instead, which is a little less intense. We have another voltage that we can generate by gesture, the pressure voltage. there, I guess. But really, why stop there? Why stop anywhere? Patch anything you want to anywhere between these two devices. All you're doing is moving electrons back and forth, making voltage go up and down. Some of it will be audible, some of it will work as control signals, a lot of it, both. Move those electrons back and forth, move that voltage up and down, you can move your speaker cones in and out and give your ears a very detailed massage. Just make sure you don't turn it up too loud. So in this video, we talked mostly about pitch control. Next time, we'll talk about dynamics. Uh, also, because this is kind of a from the basics video, I know we got a little crazy here at the end. Uh, if you have any questions, don't be shy to ask them in the comments. We'll be happy to answer them. Any questions about how this works, why this worked, what else you would like to see, don't be shy. We'll be happy to answer them for you.